Hi, I'm Kasu Sharma, and today I'll talk to you about Technetium 99M. First of all, Technetium is located in the transition metals. Its most stable isotope, which is Technetium 98, is still very radioactive, which is unusual for something in the transition metals. Even more radioactive is its isotope Technetium 99M, which is used all over the world in diagnostic imaging technology. The M stands for metastable. This means that its nucleus is very excited and needs to undergo gamma radiation to become more stable. The process in which Technetium 99 is produced is very difficult. The hardest step is getting the uranium-235, which has many international laws placed around it on its own because of its radioactivity. Also, the process of getting the uranium-235 involves numerous centrifuges, which extract the uranium-235 from the 238, which is mined. Now to make the Technetium-99, first of all, the uranium-235 needs to undergo spontaneous fission to make molybdenum-99. Molybdenum-99 is a very unstable isotope of molybdenum, which quickly undergoes beta decay to form Technetium-99M. As we learned earlier, we know that Technetium-99M needs to undergo gamma radiation to become more stable. The fact that Technetium-99 only undergoes gamma radiation is why it has such a short half-life of only 6 hours. This short half-life is why it's so useful in medical imaging technology. Technetium was first produced by bombarding molybdenum atoms with extra protons. This bombardment increased the atomic number to 43, which is technetium. Nowadays, however, 40% of the global technetium 99M comes from Canada's chocolate reactor in Ottawa as a byproduct. Technetium 99M has many uses, especially in the medical imaging technology field. Approximately 85% of diagnostic imaging procedures in nuclear medicine use this isotope, which is over 20 million diagnostic nuclear medical procedures every year. An average diagnosis usually begins with the isotope being injected into your bloodstream. The idea is that the contaminated blood goes to the affected area of your body and it stays there. The patient is then quickly taken into a PET scanner, which picks up the gamma radiation being emitted off of the technetium 99M isotope. The gamma radiation is converted into a full colored image created by the PET scanner. The red areas show higher concentrations of gamma radiation being produced while the blue areas show little to no gamma radiation. With this information, the doctors can quickly diagnose a problem in the body. This is where Technetium 99M's very short half-life of only 6 hours makes it stand out from any other isotope. Again, this is due primarily to the fact that Technetium 99M only produces gamma radiation. This type of radiation will pass through the body at the speed of light, which unlike alpha or beta particles, lurk around in the body and will cause radiation damage. Now, to conclude this video, I will go through the pros and cons of using Technetium 99M. First of all, let's start with the cons since there are hardly any of them. Since it is a highly radioactive substance, it will cause radiation damage if and only if used incorrectly. And lastly, a minor con is that it's hard to manufacture and transport because of its short half-life. Saving the best for last, let's move on to the pros. A major pro, again, is that its short half-life is only 6 hours, which means it won't be in the body for that long. And again, this isotope will only emit gamma radiation and not alpha or beta particles, which are bad. Lastly, the gamma radiation being produced is the ideal strength for the PET scanner to detect.